Welcome to X-Men 97, episode 5 of Cyclops is Waiting for Me, an X-Men animated recap podcast. I'm JC, and wow, this week is a doozy, because I had to watch this episode three times, and it's not any less heavy on your second or third viewing. One of those classic feel-good moments, right? And I'm Rod. I also watched it three times, but once at home, once with uh, you and the rest of Scum and Villainy, and in JP, and I forgot Mojo's voice actor's name, who's also there. Way to put me on the spot where right. I don't have the name ready. Thank you, Rob. We're sorry, we're sorry, guys. Mojo was there. Mojo and Banshee. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. And then my third time on the train back to my house today. So this has been a full gamut of experiences. Anyway, today we'd like to welcome our guest who, man, you picked an episode, Cosmo <laughs> Tayson. What up? My name is Cosmo. I'm from the Cosmo Show on YouTube. Dude, I watched it at midnight. Okay, yeah, you so did, I'm, I'm going to try to watch it before everybody else because I was like planning on going to Scum and Villainy. I'm like, cool, I'm going to do like my cool, like, you know, casual Gambit cosplay. Yeah, at 12 o'clock, I'm like, okay, this is, this, is a, this is a lot. This is a lot. And then all of a sudden that end, that last part, I never I never raised up from my chair before for anything. <laughs> I'm just like right there in front of my, my, my front of my television. I'm like looking and like eyes are bulging out starting to tear up and whatnot and i knew i knew exactly what gamble was gonna do i just i knew it so i just feel like that's the kind of guy that he's a sacrificer he'll do that for the team but uh, it was just horrible horrible horrible. yeah I, i think i figured out the writer's formula it's like whoever does the coolest thing something terrible happens every now they're like four for four now (laughs) <laughs> they are they are so far i mean i mean we haven't really had anything terrible happen to scott yet but it's coming i'm, I'm pretty sure i mean it, he, lost he had to his give son. up he had to give up his kid <laughs> not bad <laughs> <laughs> by That's comparison not- maybe i'd still yeah. say oh well, what was wait. me i got i got a clone wife with a kid and then i have my other wife from back in the days Jeez, that's horrible <laughs> well i guess we'll put it this way there is a, a a guy who wants to be the father of this child that lost his kid <laughs> my favorite is, is just his interview with the news person i'm like yeah man it's like you guys are lucky you guys are alive There's just that whole breakdown of seeing cyclops just saying you know what f it i'm done with yeah. you. I'm, done, I'm done being a boy scout this is a shitty year i've had some shitty years with the x-men but this is really shitty <laughs> Yeah, last night at Scum and Villainy, the bartender that was like kind of near us at the bar was like, he's like, I don't even think he was paying attention to the episode. He's like, he's just speaking truth. I was like, yep. He was actually one of the, the bar backs. It wasn't oh, bar one back. of the bartenders. Okay. I knew exactly who it was, though. But yeah, he was just kind of like half paying attention, but he heard Scott's speech and he was like all about it. So I, yeah. I think it also because it resonates with anyone who's been in a group that was othered. It's just like, yeah, no, this, uh, this is universal to, to that experience. Yeah. Especially growing up in the 90s in high yeah. school and whatnot. So, right. Yeah. Cyclops is Waiting for Me is our weekly podcast series where we're going back and watching every single X-Men animated episode we can find, unfortunately, in this case. This podcast started with the original 1992 X-Men, the animated series, building up to, I guess, this specific moment, this series in general, the release of X-Men 97. Some quick reminders. We are a recap show about an episode that aired less than one week ago. There are going to be spoilers. And wow, there are going to be spoilers. If you don't want it spoiled for you, pause the podcast, watch the episode, and then come back and listen to the rest of it. We are currently not sponsored or affiliated with Marvel, Marvel Animation, Disney, Disney Plus, or Hulu in any way, shape, or form. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Cyclops IWFM Pod on Instagram, TikTok, Threads, X, and Facebook. And of course, make sure to follow us on all your favorite podcast services. And real quick, John hasn't seen this yet. I guess, Cosmo, you haven't either. But This is horrifying because I'm usually the <laughs> one surprising Rod, so right. I don't know what to expect here. So my friend Tim from back in Delaware, Tim literally retaught me how to ride a bike at one point. That was like his literal actual job. That you're not supposed to ever forget he had to reteach you? Got it. Cool. <laughs> and he got to watch me literally learn how to re- ride a bike. Anyway, since then, I, I knew that Tim was a toy enthusiast. I did not know that he had a vintage toy business. And he messaged me one day, so I knew this was coming. I didn't know to what scale this was coming. He was like, hey, I, I want to send you something. And he sent a picture. And I was like, oh, so you listen to the podcast. And he was like, you have a podcast? I mentioned this specific thing like a few episodes ago, so it was just really serendipitous. But he sent me one of the original Sentinels. Oh, my God. The one that the chess piece opens up. <laughs> yep. Oh, and, man. But also he sent me... Nightcrawler! With and, the suction cups on it. Right. And there is an unboxing video of this that I will pro- you, it'll probably... You guys have probably already seen this by the time this podcast goes up. It was originally... I actually... So I got this right before I went to Scum and Villainy last night. And you didn't was, even tell me, you son of a bitch. Right. <laughs> well, I w- this was going to be just like a quick video of me unboxing it and then like posting it. Well, 
I won't go into the details because this it, I, I ended up having to like edit the video. I'm still editing the video because he ended up sending like so much more stuff. There's I see cards. I see bagged figures that looks like a Whoa. Sauron and Ooh. Savage Land Wolverine yeah. and Samurai Leo. And then this is literally a bag of like miscellaneous accessories for other toys. Like, oh, so this was a blind bag thing that will probably be its own little video. That it, well, I guess you guys have seen it now. It's Red Skull, and Ooh. then like a Ghostbusters accessory, a Mighty Max, some of those wow. muscles. Mighty Max. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, this was wild. I didn't expect. It. And I, do you guys know what this is? I don't. I've never seen this before or if i have i didn't know what it was is it a mad balls it looked like I, a mad ball it looks I, like a gold mad balls i thought yeah. it was but i i just haven't seen anything this small before anyway so thank you again tim from yeah shout out to tim tim has an instagram i think it's called silver clown clown spelled with a k it's all one word we'll put the links yeah we'll whatever. put the links in the description and for it in the in the instagram i was gonna say reels but this is too long for a reel it's just gonna be a straight up post video <laughs> in instagram but I, I have it like on screen there but yeah it's so much stuff like he told me he was going to send this and then right before he mailed off the stuff asked me what my favorite ninja turtle was so i was i knew one and a half of the things but it's Raphael, I, right yeah so i said i actually like all of them i know it's a cop out but i like their chemistry Total cop out. but when i buy the toys i have uh, leo action figures i like blue okay okay and yep. big swords that's cool that's cool that's cool i like swords and too, but... one last thing before we get into this episode cosmo since you got to be there let's talk a little bit about the la premiere that you got to attend and you got to see the first three episodes along with the cast and creators before any of us did we get to hear a little bit about it from isaac who i know you're actually friendly with what was that experience like for you being there and, and seeing that early with everybody else that was amazing. I haven't experienced anything like that in a while since like Star Wars or Endgame, just like being around with a bunch of people that are like minded. And then it was just, it was really fun. The line was like really short. All the cosplayers that I could think of in from TikTok and then just in SoCal were there. It was just beautiful. They had like, they had a red carpet, you know, standing repeat kind of thing, taking pictures. They had the actors there. They had a DJ playing. It was just really great. It was really great to see just a room full of x-men cosplayers and not all of them were like x-men like uh, characters there was some captain americas there were some thors but the majority of them were, well my friend jim jim donovan donnelly he dressed up as a friends of humanity kind of guy he had a sign i so did, he, i have seen the pictures of him i'm like you had the nerves to bring that <laughs> to the theater it was it was great it was a great ultimate experience i'm telling you man just that opening part and in still each episode five episodes in you hear that build up like it's like and it just boom the song it's just, it's a beautiful it's a wonderful feeling yeah i was gonna say in the previous episode i mentioned like in one of the facebook groups we're in someone asked if it would be distasteful to like cosplay as a friend's humanity like, yeah. person and we were like maybe not but like why because you're basically wearing a t-shirt <laughs> it's a t-shirt or like a, a beret hat whatever they you know like a green beret hat and then you know it's it's kind of like one of those characters that nobody dares to like cosplay. Like you never see a foot soldier yeah. cosplayer. You never but, see those guys. But there should be more foot soldiers. I would love to see foot soldiers at uh, at shows. Yeah. But the sign that's a good that's a nice touch. That's where you could have fun with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. then, you can have you, fun with it. Then you can join the religious picketers outside the Glendale Galleria or the ones <laughs> at the cons with the yellow signs. Oh, All right, gosh. everybody's favorite. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, now. On to the show. Today we are talking about Season 1, Episode 5, titled Remember It. It aired on April 10th of 2024, currently sits at a 9.8 star rating on IMDb, and as far as I could find, this is the highest rated single piece of X-Men non-comic media ever created in this episode. Holy shit. shit. Take a hint, Marvel, in writing. Right. Sorry. Well, I, I told uh, JC last night, it's coming villainy, I was like, man, this show just keeps proving how badly the Fox X-Men movies fucked up. Mm -hmm. Yep. How easy, like this little animated show has outclassed everything they've done in live action. Yeah. And you know, like the, it's, I don't know, it's like star power when it comes to the actual Fox movies because you have Hugh Jackman, you know, and he's playing Wolverine. So, of course, he's going to be your top build to watch, you know, maybe Holly Berry, maybe Franken Jensen and Patrick Stewart and all those other people. But it's like, it's like nobody actually did the homework when it comes to like making these movies. Like, what's important the storyline what's driven i mean they had it down between magneto and charles but but that's all just, they had that's all they had you know 
and it's and then base just taking someone like the they weren't really they, like I said they didn't do their homework they didn't see the lovable characters they could like there's so much they could have done with Rogue Wolverine should be like a, a back thought I think that's what I love about the cartoon show it wasn't all about Wolverine he was great yep. because he's he has an attitude has a chip on his shoulder he's easy to get pissed off and he has a weird past but he wasn't the only amazing person in the X Men you know with a great story totally well. One of the things that we did here at WonderCon was that every single character was getting their own previously on. And this episode, we got Gambit getting the previously on. I, I know. wonder why. Yeah. I know. This, is your, this is your last chance to drop out if, if you don't want spoilers and you need to watch the show. You're, you're too far yeah, invested this, at this point. This is, this is the only, this is the most that you should just watch the show before listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most. So previously on, we get some moments between Maddie, Nathan, and Bishop. We get Magneto's speech at the UN. We get the reminder about Genosha being formally brought into the United Nations. And then we get one last reminder about the love triangle between (laughs) Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit. And we pop into the intro. New to this intro, we get Cable and Apocalypse, which we have not seen anything with adult Cable in the intro before. Though not new, we do get the gloved off kiss between Gambit and Rogue. And then we also get a shot that has not existed anywhere else yet. And I think that's the one glimmer of hope of coming out of this. We get Gambit and Nightcrawler fighting on a bridge with the Genosian sh- soldiers. It Was that a yeah. flashback to the Slave Island episode? I th- I, that's what I thought. Nightcrawler wasn't in that episode. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Nightcrawler, right. his episodes, he did fight on a dam, but Gambit yeah. was not on that episode. And the time where Nightcrawler and Gambit did fight together, that was at the monastery in the Alps. So yeah. they did the same thing with Jubilees. They had a Jubilee intro with Mojo, the last episode. But did that was actually that? from an episode. That was from the okay. long shot episode. That's right. She was in that long shot episode. We yeah, just right, remember yeah. Rod and I spent way too much time over the past <laughs> two years rewatching every episode <laughs> the last time I, I watched the whole thing entirely when it was on air like it was oh my so God. it's so good that i'm just like i can't i can't it's like supernatural i can't rewatch supernatural I, I i remember it in my head i remember bits and pieces what stands out but i'm just like it was so good i just don't want to like kill myself with the memory of that like over so we've, over over we've actually talked about that on previous episodes because there are shows that i have tried to go back and rewatch. most notable of them that i liked as a kid that just completely crashed and burned rewatching it during lockdown was King Arthur and Knights of the Round, where it was like the football team trying to become the Knights of Camelot. And I couldn't get through the first episode. It was that Mm. bad. I can get, I can get through the first season and maybe the second season of X-Men, but there is a point that I I remember as a child or like teenager watching the Phoenix saga on Fox when it aired, it was at nighttime. It wasn't Mm -hmm. a Saturday morning. And it was just like epic the animating the animation kind of changed a little bit and then all of a sudden the animation totally changed the last season we're just it like halfway through the season for that yep. wedding of storm and then garbage art <laughs> just <laughs> garbage it, those last episodes are rough yeah 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 oh. so I, yep. I don't remember the last episodes maybe i can go back and watch the last season again but like night of the sentinels deadly reunions intermagneto all of those are just i've had those on vhs so i did watch them a lot as a kid on vhs but just some of the good parts you know right from, from pizza hut back in the day yeah the pizza hut ones <laughs> yeah the black with the red and gold like yep. oh yeah that's good so popping into the episode we start off with a classic four by three shot you have trish tilby who has been in episodes before is a classic marvel character and starts to give kind of that generic explanation of oh what are the what are mutants are they because of atomic testing are they nature herself saying this is the next step calling them freaks, monsters, etc. But they're mutants. It kind of gave me a little bit of that flashback of Stan Lee's intro to X-Men's Pride of the X-Men. Oh, um, hello, true believers. Yeah, it felt a little bit like that Stan-style introduction without yeah. the over-the-top Stan vibe from it. Yeah, your explanation is a lot cooler than mine. I got the vibes of like whatever the opposite of rich and famous intro was. Oh, the Rush Limbaugh. Or, yeah, it's not like, Rush Limbaugh. Is it Rush Limbaugh? Uh, no. I'm um, Robin Leach. Robin Leach. Robin Leach. Robin yes. Leach. And this yeah. yep. I knew that name didn't sound right. instead, instead of being like, and all the lavish things, it's like, these people are unaccepted. <laughs> it it kind of reminded me of Geraldo Rivera meets like a Diane Diane Sawyer or a Barbara Walters interview. Yeah. You know? oh, Definitely yeah. the Barbara Walters vibe. Totally yeah. see that. And it starts out with uh, Beast 
you know, and obviously an intentional choice by Trish because they want to show somebody who is most dramatically not human appearing. And then they kind of start sweet talking each other. <laughs> Even blue can blush. Yes. And that's not how fur works, but that's why we have animation. Yeah. That's one of those only works in animation <laughs> or in comics that that was not going to work in a live action and be believable. Then we jump over. We have Jubilee who's talking about the classes. And this is one of the things that we, we still think is funny about this. They talk about how it is a school, but they literally have one student. Mm-hmm. Jubilee is the only person who is you know, she's 18 now. She's the only one who's actually taking these classes and mentions, you know, vampire dinosaurs as a reference to Sauron from the Savage Land and Mm. such. And then there is a mention about a sense of belonging and kind of showing how the mutants have been outcasts and such. They then jump over to mentioning about the formal invitation and joining of Genosha into the UN. Oh, Genosha. (laughs) Yeah. You know, Charles Magneto made a point in the last episode. It's like, you know, all the money that Charles had, he could have done something like that for the mutants. But <laughs> I, I love I love the dialogue. Okay, Magneto's dialogue has not changed a bit. And it's just fucking epic. I just love it how he just he's quick. He's quick with like the political details of like of comebacks. But that whole going back to about the school, that the ninety seven X Men has never shown any other students. And I understand the fact didn't that either. Yeah, but I understand that it's it's a school. It was a school for Scott and all of them. But you know, it's just like there was probably more back then than it was. Like this is probably something that we don't know that they never touched on. There were other students like Bobby, and then like probably like Worthington. Because other, they other do characters. show that classic portrait of Xavier with the original five, which we've talked about this in a previous episode. It feels like they're trying to retcon and fix that change that had happened where Warren kind of like came out of nowhere as opposed to being one of the original five. Now mm-hmm. they're kind of like hitting us over the head with it of this was the original crew that was in the school. So mm-hmm. and the movies the movies did it well of all the kids and whatnot. Especially X Men too. That was yeah, they were movie. loaded with kids. They were loaded with kids. And evolution, they're all kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you only had like three teachers in, in the three. the institute. So Yeah, Logan and Storm were like the adults. No. And ironically, <laughs> Xavier's wasn't a school. They went to school. And then they had the they institute trained. they all stayed at after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was an after school program, really. <laughs> yeah. We jump over and you get the trio of Rogue, Magneto, and Gambit. And we've been going through hell determining what the he- what the jet is called because all the toys refer to it specifically as the X Jet, including the Lego set. Bluebird. But they, they literally say, Oh, the new Blackbird. Like the Blackbird, literally, yeah. Are, yeah. So was, I don't know what is going on in the licensing department, but the toys cannot call it the, the Blackbird for some Even reason. the original three-part toy? No, back in the 90s, they called it the Blackbird. Right, the, yeah. the modern toys, sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like the old, the older toys, I remember having the blue one that, you know, had you put Beast in the middle, Wolverine in the front, yeah. Cyclops, and whoever in the back. Yeah, I remember that was called the Blackbird. And I remember the some of the old-school toys. I think Hot yep. Wheels had a Blackbird toy. Like yeah, there's cool. something with the modern licensing that must be weird because that Lego set is called the X Jet, even though it is obviously the the Blackbird. So yeah. maybe it's because of like 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 Slave One, they changed it. It's maybe. Boba Fett ship. Well, it was a couple episodes ago when the roof like got ripped off the Blackbird. We were like, oh, maybe that's how they retconned this into the new the new plane nope. is called the X Jet. So they did both. They got they got a new jet, but then they just called it the Blackbird again. <laughs> yeah. I so wonder. Gambit is being a little bit snarky about how long the trip is taking. And then to Cosmo, your point, Magneto has this great line of just like, just a reminder, if something goes wrong here, you're the only one that has an issue with gravity. Right. Unless you do the whole Wolverine origins with Cyclops doing the propeller thing. Not Cyclops, Gambit. I thought yeah. that was kind of cheesy in the movie, but it would make sense if he if he was able to do something like that, like a Mary Poppins. Kind of also, thing. Gambit, like... It might be the reason they had to take the jet. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> you know? They they could have done it. Although it is a long flight. It might just be like a waste of energy to do that. So but true. I feel like I feel like in the ninety two series, Magneto has traveled further for less reasons <laughs> in a magnetic bubble. <laughs> yeah. True. Like from space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Magneto reminds that it's like, oh yeah, well, you know, you wanted to join us so you know kind of deal with it yeah gambit reminds us that a lot has changed since his last visit because his last visit was when they were literally made to be slaves and building the dams and such Mm -hmm. but then you get that epic shot from the trailer which we we you know a lot of us speculated that it was genosha but nobody was totally sure where you do end up seeing 
this giant pyramid, you see the epic statues of Charles and Magneto kind of welcoming people to Genosha. It still reminds me of the big statues in Lord of the Rings when they're on the boats to go to the world, like the land of the elves. I forgot the exact name for it, but that's totally the visual that it evoked for me. Yeah. Or like in Star Wars with the three, three force presence, the father, the daughter and the son. They're like statues. Yep. So we're going to play our favorite game, Rod. Who are those mutant cameos? You might know here's too many cameos. Jason will oh. take care of this. So I did recognize you told me that was Glob. I recognize that character from something. I'm not sure. Was he around when I was when we were kids? No, Glob probably would have started during the Grant Morrison run. I want to say Cosmo. Feel free to correct me if I'm I'm speaking out. I of believe he's part one. of the new X Men. Yeah. Like- like, ult- like the Qu- after Quentin Ultimate Quire Series? Era. Yeah, Quentin Quire, yeah. So yeah. Maybe I'm confusing him with like a Ninja Turtles character. After my time. <laughs> he does look like Mutagen, man. I would agree maybe, with you on maybe that. Maybe that's where yeah. I thought of it. Yeah. And and I I know, is it Pix- Pixie? Pixie, yep. Pixie. 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 And I only know Boom Boom because you pointed him out, pointed her out last night at Scum and Villainy. But I, I think like there were so many characters up there. Once you like look at her, you're like, okay, yeah, that's yep. boom, boom. That's the only one we see course. right up at the front is Leech, obviously. You know Leech, who Leech yeah. is. And all the Morlocks. Yeah. Yep. There are, there's lots of amazing like shots overseeing all of Genosha and particularly this like bustling downtown area. There's this green parrot bird that transforms into a girl or she was transformed into a bird. I cannot find who this girl <laughs> is. And <laughs> the Facebook groups... Like somebody mentioned there's a character who's a, a polymorph named Quetzal, short for like Quetzalcoatlus. I cannot find that character on all the wikis on it. Because mm. there is a a villain named Quetzalcoatlus who's like apologies if it is Mayan or Aztec. I, I'm not sure which of the, the gods it is on there, but that is not this character. So it was I don't know who this girl is that, you know, just had short wispy hair with the same colors as the bird. You then see Nature Girl, who is the girl who has the deer antlers in mm-hmm. there. Yep, you get Dazzler. Multiple man. In the foreground, you also get a shot of a woman who looks like Blink because there was a very heavy green and t- and purple color scheme on it. Yeah. Absolutely, to your point, Cosmo, Multiple Man is there. This dance sequence breaks out a little bit later on. We'll get to, to some of those other ones, but those are the ones we see right at the beginning. You see a lot of banners there. Lots of Welcome the X-Men, Magneto logo, was, like the M shape. Magneto and then, of course, was Magneto right. was right. Yeah, he said, he said <laughs> is like right a, this time. Yes, yeah, sorry, is yeah. right. Well, yeah. yeah, it reminded me of a Thanos kind of thing. <laughs> Thanos was right, <laughs> right, because that was in the Hawkeye show. That that was a mug that Kate Bishop was drinking out of, which I cannot find a good version of. There's probably a reason for that. There's a reason why Disney doesn't want to endorse the like split the world in two kind of mug. You know, too yeah. late for that. <laughs> right. But there is also another character, Gargoyle, who is. Lavinia LeBlanc is her name, and Gargoyle is spelled differently, but mm. it was the the mutant with the wings and the horns and stuff like that. Yeah. looked a lot like Demona from the Gargoyles cartoon, candidly. So hmm. those are all of the ones that we have right at the beginning. Don't worry, Rod, there will be more. The, <laughs> oh, the quiz will continue. And they land on the rooftop. And I like maybe this was just me. I was not expecting Maddie to be there at at this scene. No, I didn't either, but it makes sense. Where else would she go? Well, yeah, I guess she walked to Genosha. We talked about the last episode. Like, she just walked into the woods like Sad Hulk style. We're like, where are you going? And no one giving you a ride? <laughs> right. Right. But, and, but like, I, I just thought that they were going to let that storyline, like, kind of simmer linger. a little more. Yeah. yeah. So that we were like, oh, remember her? Yeah. Like, yeah, from a week ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, I was just a little shocked on how quickly we ended up coming back to her. But, we but that find makes out that, sense. It makes sense for the yeah. link and all that stuff like that to add that into it. That right. Cyclops so, is still having a not yeah. even a fair. People call it cheating, but I'm like, not really. He's kind of torn between. He doesn't know what's doesn't know what to think, what to believe, but he know he has a connection with one Jean Grey that thinks she's the Jean Grey, but she's not the Jean Grey. So I think right. I think the, the the cheating kind of vibe comes in with the non communication. Like mm-hmm. I think that's the key. It's like a little more communication between all of them, but especially Scott. Right. Solve a lot of grievances here. But in the comic <laughs> right. books, Gene does that. They have a psychic like link with each other. They've, that that's known at least if you read the comic books, and uh, that's why I'm surprised that 
Jean herself, the real Jean, hasn't tried any of that kind of conditioning therapy kind of thing, you know, especially with Scott. Like, can you help me with these memories? You know, maybe <laughs> yeah. we can we can pinpoint where I was switched, you know, <laughs> which generation. It's just it's crazy. So at that point, we we get a little bit of exposition. We find out Val Cooper is there, too, at the landing pad. And Maddie has been a uh, part of the interim council that is running Genosha because they wanted an X-Men and there just so happened to be a duplicate available. The fact that she is so flippant about being a clone is actually incredibly endearing because modern comic version of Maddie, it's hard to really like her because she's also like pseudo evil. This one is like, I actually just enjoy reading her or watching Mm -hmm. her, you know? Yeah, she is a bitch in the comic books. (laughs) Especially to Havoc. Oh yeah. I like to hear that, yeah, she said that they wanted an X-Man and you guys had spare Gene. I'm like, Jesus. Yep. <laughs> <Too soon. laughs> but I wonder if the world knows that because obviously the reporter didn't know that. Right. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they actually refer to Gene as Marvel Girl, too, yeah. which yeah. that's the first time I've heard that said in the show. Formally. Yeah. yeah. So Val is not happy that Magneto is there. He basically was like, yeah, I was shocked. I got the invite that had a UN seal on it. And you find out that they at the council want to have a private conversation with Magneto and Brogue and Gamut are like, oh, well, guess where does that leave us? And we get Kurt appearing on. Yes. Such a joy of interest. Kirk with ADHD. Hell yeah. <laughs> you yeah. think about it. You and think that's about the original it. voice actor. Is it? I think, I think so, it's the original voice actor. So Beast I think, and Wolverine I don't think original, it is. Rogue's original, oh, really? Storm is original? I think it's swapped. Yeah, okay. Allison Seeley Smith is the original, too. I oh, think okay. this is a different one. I think okay. I think the Nightcrawler voice actor swapped to a different character scenario, and I could be wrong. And Well, the original okay. Gambit voice is Cable. Right. Which is, a, I, thought, I thought it was Josh Borland the first time I heard it. I'm like, is that Josh? No, a few people not. did say that. The only reason I wouldn't have thought it is because I remembered reading it previously. Because mm, I had to go, I had to, I had to go to IMDb to check it out. So yeah. Well, who, if, if if it wasn't the original Nightcrawler voice actor, they did a great, great job, job of like. Because I, I was convinced that that was like the cunt and kind of the cool cameo. They came back. I also love the Gambit, like nonchalantly threw in like a threesome reference. He said like four is better than three. Most. Oh of yeah. Them. And we're like what? <laughs> what did you yeah. just? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I read that as like you know. Two's a couple, three's a crowd kind of scenario. Yeah, but then the most times part is when I was like, oh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how I read it, too. I'm like, well, you know, I, I can actually see that coming from Gambit. Rod goes in a direction when watching the show. You <laughs> know what's funny? I did that during 92, and then in 97, they're just doing it for me. That's true. Yeah. Some of the <laughs> moments they are doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah. So Kurt is actually a member of the council there to help make sure that all of the various religions and communities of faith are represented because... As much as New York was the melting pot when the United States was founded, this is in a modern world where even more religions and mm. such are being brought into this location at once. And he decides he's going to play tourist with them as Magneto's having the meeting. He was so we happy. Get, he was bamfing everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We get a few more mutant cameos. You see a character. There's debate on who it is. It's a, a darker skin character who looks like they have like reddish or pink tattoos on their body. And I saw uh, uh, New Rockstar said it could either be Loa, who I've read before, or Long Strike, who I've never read before. So mm-hmm. those are some yeah, options yeah. on there. Loa, I believe, was also in that New Mutants era, like when Glob was created, too. Okay. And then there is a quick scene where the kids are all messing around. One of them falls into the fountain, and this weird water mutant pops up that I had never seen that character before. Either of I. But... I feel like this team is not messing around with not pulling a reference. It might be one of the most obscure references from a single panel, but I feel like everything here is a reference to a character that's existed. Rogue drops the line. Oh, it's just like he said it would be. And that was the first like, like Ooh, just a record scratch. <laughs> 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 oh man. Yeah, that was an awkward like, moment for her. Yeah. It was like professor. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah, totally. The professor. You find out that the apples are very expensive. Ten dollars. Ten dollars for an apple. Not even red apple. Oh, green apples. They're fucking red apples, man. <laughs> yeah, red apples are trash. <laughs> don't, I don't like red apples. I, I, my only maybe defense of this is like we're not sure if they're, you know, they're Genosian dollars. Maybe that's different, you know. Rogue does hand money off and it is not green like it is US dollars, so maybe. 
Yeah. Maybe they but then a... she already went through the currency exchange, which is really impressive. Right. And I, I, uh-huh. I love the Kurt, who is, you know, the devout, like, religious person. He's like, ah, you know, capitalism. Yep. Yeah. Gambit mentions, <laughs> of- Gambit mentions that, you know, he's kind of asking the question that nobody else is. Like, why is Magneto suddenly the mutant MVP? So it's he's mm-hmm. the MMVP, I guess, at this <laughs> point. And then music starts playing. You get the next round of cameos. There's a mutant singer who I don't know who that is. To your point, we get multiple man. We get Dazzler there. Boom, boom, as mentioned. Who are the other two? Do you know? Oh, man. The other two that were like phasing in, in and out with each other. So one. Yeah, the two that so, were phasing in and out. Those are the I two don't two. recognize them, but I've seen their cosplays re- recently. So the guy is Exodus, who has a massive part in the current Kakroan era. He is a, essentially an, you know, a, a religious figure who believes in the comics that Hope Summers is literally the mutant messiah. And the character actually goes back to biblical times in the comics. So then the character phasing through him is called Cypher. I don't know anything else about them other than their name is Cypher. Yeah. Nightcrawler catches how Gambit and Rogue are, their souls are tied together in every single gaze that they share. And Cosmo, I know you're a massive fan of, of the relationship between them. So any thoughts as as Kurt was kind of pushing Gambit along of like, just, he's like, just marry her. You know, I believe in that point in his head, he's like, you know what? Why not? You know, it's like at this point for so long, might as well try because this Magneto guy is popping in. He's just, he's crashing the party here. It's like, I don't really, I didn't know too much. I didn't read too much into it as at that point, only until their conversation later, you know, by the fireplace when Mm -hmm. like, I was like, Oh shit. It's like, yeah, they didn't want like a, they didn't want like a, how do you call it? I don't, I've, it almost feels like a conversation I've had with exes. It's like, I don't want to be like public about it. You know, just be, yeah, we're here doing our thing on the, on the down low, quiet. You know, you play your part. I play my part. It's fine. No one, no one right. put the two to two together. Yeah. They didn't want to move it to being the label kind of scenario. Yeah. 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 That was, that was that was a great moment. I've, I, I saw a glimmer of idea in his eyes. Like, yeah, maybe I should. And the only thing more Kurt could have said would be like, you know, you could just like jack m- another one of those friends of humanity guys and get one of the collars. Problem That's solved. okay. I've had this. <laughs> I've, ha- I've I have this TikTok from back in the days with this bro cosplayer, and I actually use my voice for it because. Well, I couldn't find any good soundbite. I was like, shit, yeah, I got the collar. <laughs> but then it's revealed to be a Friends of Humanity collar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I got a special collar for you. It was like a Christmas, during Christmas, actually. I was trying to do the night before Christmas and all through the mansion. That right. mutant was stirring. That It was like a whole thing. And I was like, and then Gambit slipped her uh, blah, 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 blah. And then she opens it up. It's a collar. <laughs> Kiki times. But <laughs> that makes sense. It makes totally sense. Why not? Why the fuck not? So Gambit kind of tries to deflect on it. He's like, you know, I don't have time. I'm too busy with sin. And then Nightcrawler does a great job of tossing it right back to him. He's like, there is no love without sin because it's all about what you're able to forgive. And it's like, oof. I I screenshotted that sent to my brother. My brother's a pastor, Cosmo, if you don't know. And I was like, man, Nightcrawler's like dropping some wisdom. Like non, non, like not what you would think of conventional religious wisdom, but makes the most sense Mm -hmm. in the religious context as well. Yeah. So so good. Great writing again. Fuck. Yeah. Jumping back over, we get to that interview starting between Trish and Cyclops. And they're trying to like frame the shot. And there's a reflection off of Cyclops' glasses. And the cameraman is like, hey, yeah, just take those off. That was such a great call out because I, I have to believe that it was so purposeful because it reflects like real world stuff. And mm-hmm. I know that there's different versions of this for different groups of people that aren't like straight white guys or something. But like I remember in high school, you know, I, my, our family was the only Asian family in town and I was on the tennis team. And I distinctly remember the photographer that took the team tennis photo telling like pointing at me like, hey, that kid over there, can you stop squinting? There's like. <laughs> Oh, that's just shit. my eyes. Oh. <laughs> like, that's fucked up. But right. I, I kind of so the Scott like they're not even thinking that there's a reason. No. Despite you know, the fact it's like you know Trish is smart enough that she knows what Cyclops can do, but yeah. they just bought a random cameraman. And it's like if I take these off, you're not gonna have a head anymore, dude. But isn't isn't it like that though? Like I do interviews too, and sometimes like my producer, my camera guy, he's just rearranging shit. <laughs> he's like, hey, you're not wearing that. Just like, you know what? Actually, if you turn this to the left, it looks better on camera, blah, blah, blah. Just totally doing things. I'm like, well, what if the person that I'm interviewing had this look, this idea? Now you're just totally corrupting it and making it work for the camera? 
Like, no. Yeah. So <laughs> Trish starts to, to dive in, starts talking about, you know, Scott and Marvel Girl being the power couple of the X-Men, asking him about how he knew that she was the one. What a great line, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then <laughs> it jumps outside where Jean is in the lake nearby and looking through memories that are in like bubbles of water and i was looking closely on them none of them were really like significant poses except Mm -hmm. for the wedding itself everything else was usually like a general team shot Mm -hmm. they weren't as pointed as gene's memories in the fire made flesh episode Mm -hmm. so And and even the wedding could have been one of three so who knows yeah yeah it it felt like a good reference to all the movies the lake for x2 yeah Yeah, x2 and then x3 with cyclops being obliterated stay away from the lakes stay away from the lakes (laughs) (laughs) so wolverine comes out he's asking gene if she's skipping the questions too mentions you know that gene is still unsure about her memories but seems comforted by the fact that you know wolverine's face is is there and wolverine's like well yeah this face hasn't changed in a hundred years so I guess this is the closest thing we're going to get to a formal confirmation of Wolverine's age in there. Because we've always wondered, like, how old actually is Logan in this? So, because we saw a younger Logan who was not dramatically younger fighting in World War II. So, with Captain America. Exactly. So that was, what, 70s, 60s? He, he would have been, well, no, no, World War II was 44. Five. 45, 45. I, I yeah, was thinking, yeah. of, thinking of, You're thinking of Vietnam, Captain America. Vietnam. Captain America is in the movie. It was something. Oh, was yeah, there, yeah. The timeline. Yep. So he asked what you guys still aren't talking. Gene is like, no, he's, you know, grieving the loss of his son. And he's realizing that he's avoiding her. And, you know, they're talking about how it hasn't been like this since she had gotten the powers of the Phoenix. And Wolverine's like, yeah, yeah, when you got the Phoenix. And she's like, oh, yeah, I forgot you were there. So even she's not sure about her own memories at that point by forgetting Wolverine would have been there for it. This moment made me wonder if they're going to reveal that both of them were the Phoenix just at different times. One was the Phoenix and then one was the Dark Phoenix. Yeah, like, kind Madeline, of... was, like Madeline was the second one. Right. I wonder Damn. if that's going to be the reveal. So did that So that scene in the original, uh, in the 90s, when they all got captured, and then Rogue was like, Gambit was like, I never told anybody this before, but Gambit loves you. That, that whole scene when they're all captured... And they had to fight the nasty men. boys and the mutants. Yeah. yeah. Did the saga but happen before or after that? After. Because it was season three and that was the conclusion to season two. Damn. So that's But that, that is the been... that is the episode where genetic material gets heavily referenced. So <laughs> So that's that's the part he probably could have swapped her and then bring her back for the Dark Phoenix to interrupt right. that whole situation. Because Jean was gone at that point. You know, after mm-hmm. she did all her things and then all of a sudden here's Dark Phoenix with the Hellfire Club. So Right. Mm-hmm. so scott is also mentioning about the first time he asked gene out and they are both simultaneously sharing this story which i do think ties into their psychic rapport that they're doing this whether or not they realize they're doing it at the same time mm-hmm. about how she wanted to show him he had nothing to fear and while she is literally hearing galaxies asking for her she was grounded because she literally was able to take off Cyclops' glasses, look him in the eye, and hold back his mutant power from from shooting out. And basically says to Logan, he's the reason I stayed. Mm, that's tough. It's almost like a reverse oh. Carol Danvers situation. Right. Carol Danvers had to go to the galaxy because they needed they needed her, while her yeah. friend Maria Rambo and, her, and like Maria's daughter was just like, well, I needed you. Wolverine kind of gives Gene the nudge of, you know, you got to keep moving forward because getting lost in the past is only going to yank you under. And Gene mentions she forgets how many sunrises that Wolverine has seen. And Wolverine drops the, well, I've only seen one of you, Red. And that's where they have a kiss. And I literally shot Rod a text that was just like the bulging eyes emoji as that <laughs> happened yeah. with no context other than because I didn't know where oh, he was in, was the, in the episode. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That, I think that was the moment I was like, oh, this is going to be the big thing that happens this time. Well, <laughs> no, nope. you know. but the, 
I don't know if anybody else noticed. I noticed it on the second or third watch. No, the third watch because I was on the train with my headphones. There's score playing throughout this whole thing, and then the music cuts the moment they kiss. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it goes completely silent for like that full time. They're just staring at each other. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and then Wolverine is actually the one who pulls back on the kiss, and he gives the "You're Jean Grey." He's Scott Summers. Those are the rules. You just forgot him for a second. And that is the most self-control I have ever seen Wolverine have as a character in any iteration of these characters. He doesn't want it to be that way, you know? If it's going to happen, he doesn't want it to happen just because she's lost and she doesn't really remember. Mm -hmm. But she's probably scanning Wolverine's, like she did when she woke up. It's like, oh, this is how he felt about her for so long. It's like all those feelings and whatnot. So it's kind of like the only person in that damn mansion that had any kind of affecting or actually missed her or just so surprised or had a love, a true love connected to her is Logan. And she, yep. he's the first one that she wakes up to. And so, like, Sky is having, like, this thing on the other side with Madeline, so. <laughs> right. So, he says to go and talk to the overgrown Boy Scout. At that point, inside the mansion, it gets to the aggressive interview popping up. So, oh, if, if yeah. Professor X was alive, he would have stopped him right in the middle. Of well, Scott. I felt like, I felt like, Rod, this, this is the joke of we have, of like, this feels like our Scott. Because yeah. the season started with Scott feeling so, so cool. Mm-hmm. And this version of Scott is the like angry yelling Scott because he's not in a happy place right now. Nope. And this kind of mirrors what I mentioned earlier about like whoever does the coolest things will probably be like significantly hurt later. I, I think I'm starting to figure out all the writing things they're doing with this show. So like Scott was unusually likable at the beginning for this moment. And so, like, I think my radars are going to be out now for, like, oh, somebody's doing something that's, like, a little bit weird for them or, like, a little more or something. Like, oh, no, the opposite's going to happen. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So Trish is asking about parenthood because she saw there were records of Nathan Christopher Summers being born. Obviously, Scott and, and Maddie had to give up the kid. And she's kind of, like, asking, like, about it. He's denying it. And she's... She basically says, we came here to show people that you're just like them. So why are you lying? And that's when it's because you're normal. And it's like, that was the most insulting I have ever heard the word normal be in a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, That's when Um, when the script flips. Uh. Yep. Yeah. You know, you're ungrateful. We risk our lives. I had to give up my kid because you can't say thank you. Yeah, I felt good hearing him say that, though. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm nothing like you. Thank God. And the only reason is that it, that you're still alive is yeah. because of that. That sequence did make me think like, hmm, OK, the X-Men, they didn't think about the child's birth records because people are probably going to wonder where a whole ass kid went. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It was the pre-internet era. Like, I don't know. Well, here's the thing is time travel is happening a lot and no government is like trying to look into that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we can go back and stop World War One. Hell, we can go back and stop everything. <laughs> is, isn't that the argument with like Uatu and stuff? He's like, oh, he intervened because Dr. Strange's situation is so dire. He's like, yeah, but you like like slavery and the Holocaust happened too. You're right. You're like, but strange in the one moment. <laughs> so after Scott gets up, we jump over to the, the council. You mm. see... Sebastian Shaw, the White Queen, Callisto, Banshee, Moira, Maddie, and Magneto in there. And I do love just the fact that they they make sure to point out that Moira is there, added as like a human ally to mm. it. Despite the fact that if you're reading the modern comic, Moira is a mutant. Oh, did not know. Yeah, that. I haven't read. Really, yeah. I haven't picked up anything modern in a, in a while. So not only is her son Proteus a mutant. She also is a mutant, and it causes some issues in the modern era, and I'll leave it at that. So, nice. Damn. Yeah. So that was like one of those, like, I'm trying to think, at the time they would have written this, I think Moira would have been revealed to be a mutant, but it was like super duper fresh at that point. Then Banshee is basically saying, you know, we need to have a, a louder voice, and that there needs to be like one united community, and they reveal that they want Magneto to basically be their poster child king for the island, I believe with the exact phrasing on it. King of Genosha. Yep. And to try to like calm it down, they're like, oh, well, we decided on the word chancellor because they obviously didn't want to use something like king for it. (laughs) Well, we all know what happened when people are chancellor and become emperors. (laughs) Right. And Magneto is kind of like, well, 
why me? And as much as Shaw hates to admit it, it's like, yeah, a lot of people understandably are saying we would not be where we are right now if not for your little publicity stunt at the UN. It's true. I mean, he pointed out some facts in that UN topic, you know, everything. (laughs) It's 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 so touches real realism with like you know gay and being black and like back in the days whatnot all those political situations that happen in our real life that it reflects on the x-men and about how people are being prosecuted and yada 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 so that whole it was it wasn't a, i don't think it's a stunt i just think it was a situation that was like listen i can leave at any time but if, if you're going to give me a fair hearing like a trial i will be there i will submit yep. blah, blah, bang. but any moment i feel attacked because he could have he could have just left. There's nothing holding him back. Absolutely nothing to hold yeah. him back. Anything they were doing was just until the collar was on him, it was yeah. all lip service. The fact exactly. that he literally was like, All right, throw the collar on me. I don't yeah. like yeah. And then he doesn't want to do it. He's basically like, Isn't there some sort of better fit? And Moira, I believe, is the one who's like, Yeah, but Charles is gone. And if he <laughs> trusted you with his X Men, we can trust you with this. Mm. I like how fast Moira went from like kind of like backhanded compliment. <laughs> to moving <laughs> forward with it. He's like, right. yeah, well, he's gone. Anyway, you're great. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so he mentions Magneto about being in a bar in Germany with Charles where he hears about the dream for the first time and how Charles had said, any dream that's worth having is worth dying for. But they both assumed they were never going to see this dream happen where humanity was going to accept them. Mm-hmm. And then you get the mention of Moses of going through the pr- or going to the promised land, but actually never being there to see it happen, which is very much Charles's story on this. Mm-hmm. Maddie's response is, well, you know, it's time to dream even bigger. And Magneto says, I'm only doing this under one condition. Cuts real quickly over to Rogue, who is not happy about this <laughs> and basically accuses Magneto of like, was this your plan the entire time? Like you wanted everybody to start to trust you and then you were going to just pull all the power in for yourself. Yeah. I like how Magneto was like, it, it can be both. Now, yeah. <laughs> since episode one, I've been thinking of, or episode two, I've been thinking of like the, how this could all play out as a master plan for Magneto. You know, I'm thinking the, tr- the chick in the Senate is not who she says she is. She's Mystique, you know, doing yep. things on her end. And then getting Storm out of the way is like perfect. If you think about it, like giving, setting up the ma- Friends of Humanity with the technology. Not not uh, Gyrick or any any anybody uh, anybody else, but Magneto to make the executioner come out and then shoot him, knowing that one of the X Men would have sacrificed. Scott probably would have done it if he was there, you know, right. get in the way. So so Storm, but for Storm being the only one there that's a mega threat to Magneto, I I, I was seeing things that are like panning out and then all of a sudden he does that whole stunt in the air and he cries a little bit. I'm like, well, he's not showing them that he's crying. So maybe this isn't a plot. Maybe this is just some weird shit. Charles just dropped this crap on me, and here I am. I have to be this nice guy. So it it, it just got me thinking of plot twists and all kinds of stuff like that, especially with this episode. I'm like, when a certain somebody, when we get to it, pops up, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Things are going to rewind. Yeah, I I want to hope that it's Magneto being genuine, Mm -hmm. but I still think there is something even a little bit loaded that in the opening cinematic of 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 the show he's mm-hmm. still on the side with all the evil mutants there's something yeah. about like that's still a choice that it is still there and i know we could be overthinking it and it is purely for the sake of nostalgia that it's there but it's still there you know yeah and then rod from the first time he saw val cooper was like that's that's mystique right and we joked that i'm jaded because i know so much about the characters from reading the comics that i mm. like i didn't jump to that same conclusion But as the episodes have gone on with the way Val has reacted to mentions of Rogue, I can absolutely see that that's the case, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially when she when he's like, well, who would you who'd you pick? Like Rogue. I'm like, what'd you say? I'm like, why are you why do you why are you so worried? Yep. I just I clocked that and I didn't clock it. We'll see if I clocked it or not. But I I just when I saw her first, I was like, she's a human that's acting weird. That's a little bit too important. And I don't know. It's just like it just reads like that. And I we just came off of evolution it was like every Where time there's something everybody weird. was mystique yeah and every and anim- everything was mystique yeah yeah i'm waiting to like i'm waiting for like the next season to be like mystique can turn into an urn 
<laughs> it still has to be organic, Rod. That's the we don't know rule. that yet. That's the one rule. It has to be organic. We don't know that yet. Morph, um, Morph, well, okay, so before we jump into the next scene, Morph, Morph can, okay, is powers, is Morph and, Morph and the Mystique's powers the same? Ish. They can okay. really do the powers. To an extent. It is not the full extent of those powers. I know Mystique changes at somewhat of an atomic level mm-hmm. that's why in the comics at least currently like they were able to become nightcrawler's dad as opposed to the classic story of them being the mom i don't think there's been an in-depth explanation as to how the two are different yet because i think most fly of- is a is a is a yeah. like with those metal wings yeah when they like, became uh yeah when archangel. they, be- when they yeah. became archangel i was like okay how does this work and then like also right. with lady death and then colossus and then blob's power right yeah, it's like the the bounciness and stuff. Yeah, so I'm just like wondering, like, do they take on every everything, all aspect? Because I know Mystique really doesn't. She just churns. Yeah, I I'm trying to think of like stuff from like Exiles and stuff like that, mm. where I don't remember it formally getting the breakdown of how those two would be different. So yeah, so I, it's, I was wondering if they if if they both were the same or just one can fully adapt to the whole abilities and the other one just yeah. just mimics. I think the challenge is we've had like four different versions of Mystique via the films, comics, mm-hmm. shows, etc. And we've really only had two versions of Morph. You have Morph from this series back into 92 mm-hmm. and then Morph from the Exile series, which is literally an alternate realities Morph too. So yeah. Yeah. this scene wraps up when, you know, Magneto is basically saying, you know, I want to fulfill a promise to Xavier and I need help to do it. And then he gives a great line of like, he won't deny his passion, but loving you makes broken men whole to rogue. And I was like, that yeah. the Bo's writing on this episode is unreal with some of the lines that they were able to deliver on this. So yep. oh, and, and Magneto like dropping Gamma's name in that <laughs> middle of that yeah. is so gangster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh jumping over, you see Scott and Maddie and this is where we've been talking about a Cosmo now because it's been pointed out. We clock Maddie instantly because the hair is always down when it's Maddie sitting on his bed talking about, you know, he needs to let it go. Some things are worth holding on to. And she asks him to describe Nathan. And then we get the, you know, the foreshadowing about talking about his eyes mm-hmm. and Scott, who can't see color, remembers those big brown eyes and that rust colored hair and they you know they go in for the kiss and there's a big gene interception on the <laughs> on the psychic plane oh which God. is funny because it kind of references back to jc what you had said in previous episodes of like yeah that must be terrifying like living dating and like living with like a telepath because they could the be time. there at any point yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah and so it's like well scott what did, okay so much of a mess happening here scott what do you think was going to happen you know your partner's here that's a telepath also gene you have every right to be upset we also need to lead with i just made out with logan yeah, right. <laughs> yeah that, that is the meme that keeps popping up that isn't horribly sad about this episode <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Maddie pops out of out of her psychic rapport in the middle of their council meeting. So she was doing this during the meeting. <laughs> it's like basically out. like the equivalent of sexting during a like an office call, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, "Oh yeah, my mind drifted." And then Emma, so good, she's like, "Sure it did." <laughs> <laughs> that's the meme i saw that was fun i was like okay there's one fun meme that came out of this <laughs> she was probably yeah. catching in on that i mean that that was something that in the comics in i want to say it was joss whedon's run or no it probably would have been like new x-men where gene catches him cheating in the psychic plane with emma instead of with matt yeah that so. happened in uncanny x-men as well too yeah that relationship is complicated. Scott wants to explain. She's like, how long has it been going on? He's like, oh, about a Maybe month. A month? I've, been che- <laughs> I've been checking in since she moved overseas. So I think roughly that gives us a timeline of this has been a month and a half Ish. to two months since the events of the Inferno. Mm. And she, Jean gives the best exit ever, which led to my other text to Rod during the episode where Jean screams. She's like, fine, go to Genosha. Be with my clone as the TV cameras capture it, and Beast just goes, "Oh my, uh, oh my!" <laughs> the cameraman, he's just doing his job. He's following. Oh, he right. spotted it, and he's like, "Oh yeah, this is what I I have to keep shooting this right now." Ju- yep. Argument continues outside. 
Scott is saying like, oh, I'm confused. And she says, well, do you love me or do you love her? And Scott gives the honest answer, which is probably not what he should have done at that point when he's like, I love you both. Mm -hmm. Then Gene is like, there were whole galaxies that needed me and I stayed here for you. And then it's like, the one memory I have is your love. And then Scott tries to turn it around and is like, is, do you actually love me or do you love them? Or do you have the memory of lo loving me? Mm -hmm. Is it is it do you remember it or do you feel it? And that's where we see the first psychic blast pop off. And it looks like Gene literally got sniped through the head with this thing. Yeah, it's like Gene gets shot in the head. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I call that man—a sniper's uh, like psychic shot. It's like, yep. I'm like, wow. And at that point, I kind of was wondering if they were going with the Cassandra Nova version of this story, because that's usually who can snipe a psychic, essentially. Yeah, but damn. we'll get into to that. Gambit is getting ready rogue arrives on his balcony and she's already crying and she gives the you might want to sit down for this you might want to sit down You're like oh shit not what <laughs> and it was like oh this is this is this is going from being like cyclops maddie gene drama to this is gonna go way way deeper here for mm -hmm. me so she mentions that her evil mother was helping her with her powers, knew somebody that could help, and then we get the reveal of the Savage Land outfit rogue mm -hmm. going down and meeting Magneto. I do want to point out, there was a tweet, I believe it was Bo, and apologies if I'm crediting the wrong person, who acknowledged that she was at least in her 20s as this happened, so it was not like some people are just like saying, oh, was it like a grooming thing? There was a there was an age discrepancy, but it was somebody who was in their 20s as it was written, mm -hmm. so... That's see, I just wouldn't have clocked that because the way she described the story, it seemed so immediate after Mystique took her in because like she she got she got she left home around thirteen fourteen yeah teens so, yeah yeah so like because I, I think I remember them saying something about like thirteen or fourteen and then like she so they it was like seven plus years later that I mean if you do go by the comic book lore rogue yeah. was a villain a few years of real time from yeah. appearances and such so yeah. it's not arena. unheard of for the character we're i think we also benefit from like how long the character has existed now because comics don't play out in real time yeah mm -hmm. that it's like you know yeah you get this whole character's backstory in like two years of real time but 40 years since that has only been like maybe 12 or 14 years in the Marvel yeah. timeline. Because she know? was a bad guy for I, a while, and then she met up with uh, Marvel and took all her powers at that point. This this montage of her telling the story, though, it just, everything just happened so quick. It's like, oh, and she had, she knew a guy that could help, and then she was just, like, post-coital. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> he, he did paint her like one of his French girls. Though, right? <laughs> like, that was absolutely a Titanic vibe for me. That was, and it I, was. I want to I ask anybody that's into guys, that if you show up to a normal dinner and you're in normal clothes and they show up in a robe shirtless, is that like a ooh, yes? This. Well, I think it depends on your time. I guess, yeah. I have, I guess, that, that's, that's, what that's what I'm asking. It's just like, I was like, she, she's kind of like normal in like right. normal clothing. And, and he's just there like in a Hugh Hefner like smoking jacket with his chest showing. Well, he's, it's like one of those rom com like, like books, you know, with Fabio on yeah. the cover, you know? Yeah. And I, I will say, it's also, he's not like a prophet or a messiah, but there is a little bit, especially at that point in Magneto's career, like, he's a little bit of a cult leader. Mm. Yeah. Because, remember, he's literally, like, talking about how the world is going to change, and it really just depends on what side of the line you're on, because that could be positive and visionary, or that could be a cult leader. Mm. He's talking about, like, there's going to be mutant music and art and things like that. So, you know, if there is somebody who is trying to figure their life out, it may just have been not even intentional manipulation, but just easier to fall for somebody who's in that position of power. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't clock. I, it's just uh, it was hilarious to see. <laughs> yeah. And they find out because of an accidental touch when he's handing a wine glass to her, the spark protects him as opposed to draining his power like she would do with 99% of anybody else on the planet. And then it's like, all right, well, if we could touch, she's going to touch. Yeah. <laughs> and then to your point, Rod, I, I can't say the phrase out loud. After hooking up, she is like already fully dressed in like she sees him thrashing in his sleep and it's uncomfortable. And she's like, well, 
he didn't have room or there wasn't enough room for both his demons and mine. Yeah, so. he had a lot of demons. I could imagine yeah, oh. sleeping next to Wolverine in the movies. So. Might get stabbed. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I, that feels more dangerous to me. Yeah. <laughs> she mentions how when she was going to join the X-Men, he didn't want her to lose another family and then proceeded to act like it never happened. And they both they both went along with that lie. And Gambit has a great moment. He's like, well, are you going to accept his offer? And he's very specifically in his hand holding the Ooh, Queen, Queen of Hearts because uh. he's been throwing cards into the fire. And that's the one that he's holding as he asked that question. Yeah, he, he was holding it, too, when uh, she walked out of the room. Right. And he drops the card he to drops, the ground in, the in episode hearts, yeah. two, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So she is like, well, you know, I have the chance to change the whole world and do something bigger. And that's why I became an X-Men in the first place. And then they get into this amazing speech, like what you were referencing earlier, Cosmo, of, you know, we were never official. I respected that. And then, like, maybe it's because we've had the benefit of meeting the actors in person and, and seeing their emotion as they're talking about this. But, like, mm-hmm. him saying, I played the swamp rat, and then her saying that she played his share, like, that was just... Mm-hmm. Great. That started feeling heart-wrenching this early in the episode. <laughs> yep. It did. It that started to just seeing the tears too, man. I'm just like, I don't, don't just like, damn it, just add more, more pain yep. to that fucking pain pie. <laughs> this yeah. is horrible. And she's like following along with all the expectations of what that comes with, but mm-hmm. it's all she could ever do is just see it happening. And she just l- literally says that like everything that's going on, she can't feel him. Yeah. And yeah. you light up everything that yeah. you touch, but never me. Ugh. Oh. It. <laughs> that hit the feels. Right. I was sitting in my and then, chairs. I was like, I clenched my heart. I was like, no. Why? I was like, ah. this is too emotional to be watching at 1220 in the morning. Yeah. Like that was my, that was my general <laughs> thought. I was like, you know, this is going to be hard to go to sleep after watching. It was. It really was. Yeah. I didn't go to sleep till four. Yeah. Four in the morning. Gambit says, you know, some things are deeper than skin. And knows that Magneto is going to break her heart. But until that happens, they're just friends. And that's all they could be. And Oof, then he walks off. Like a G. Again. The first. Yep. Just uh, just kisses her hand and walks off. Yep. It was, They have nailed this relationship better than, I'd say, 90% of the comic writers I've seen do this relationship. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's because we do get the benefit of hearing the inflection in their voices and stuff like that. But there is there is something about the delivery of this combination of AJ doing Gambit, because we know AJ loved this character. He's literally said in interviews, this is the only character I wanted when I found out I was auditioning for this show. Mm-hmm. And then Lenore is, you know, 30 plus year connection to the character. Mm-hmm. It just is so authentic. Yeah. You know? And then we got the moment that I yelled at the TV. The watcher? So, yep. Uh, I saw it too and I was like, what? Is it the wa- of course the watcher would be there. Of course it's all connected. So this is based off of a story from the Grant Morrison run. Mm-hmm. I always thought this story was going to be the season finale. I was not expecting it in this episode. Nope. I thought there was going to be a few episodes of things getting off the ground and getting good in Genosha. The second I saw the Watcher in the sky, I'm like, we're fucked. We are absolutely (sighs) fucked. Yep. Real quick interjection here, guys. The episode was going longer than we expected, so we're going to put out two episodes this week. That is just a part one and part two of this. So we'll see you tomorrow with part two. Part two.